quick video here, uh, Analytics Advantage, AAGS.online. Thank you for tuning back in. Uh, looking forward to week one of the NFL season. I realize we still have like four more months, so don't go out and put your money on it right the second. There's no point in you having your money tied up that long. But uh, I just want to give you some plays that I'm already looking at, some things that uh, I think are going to be helpful, and plus EV plays. And just stuff to kind of monitor, because I think these lines are out there right now. There's going to be some line movement. It shouldn't be too major between now and the beginning of the season. But as we get into, like, preseason and kind of get the hype going for NFL season again, you will see these numbers change, especially when we get to the actual week of, you know, kickoff. Um, you'll see some huge lines. And I, the one that's on your screen right now, I can totally see just nosediving like the week before the actual game takes place. So my number one pick for week one, uh, the number one wager, I should say, is going to be Jags at Texans under 45 come week one of the NFL season. A few reasons I like that. Uh, there is the home dog trend. And if you watched uh, one of my previous videos, I kind of went over that. That's one of the biggest trends for week one of the NFL season, one of the biggest uh Trends that I like to not only take advantage of, but kind of keep track of as we move forward throughout multiple seasons. I've tracked it for about seven seasons now. Um, and the original stat came from Ralph Michaels of SportsMemo.com. Uh, Just to give him some credit there, he does amazing work. But that being said, uh, home dogs, or when we have a home dog, the under has hit 74% uh, of the time, and the record... Uh, is 12 and 33. So it is an amazing stat. Uh, it's crazy how often these go under. And 45, so that's another number there. That's actually, um, I don't want to say it's a key number, but it's sort of an important number, especially for week one, because we have 56% uh, of the games in week one stay under 45. So just that alone gives us a, a little bit of an edge there to say that we're, it could be an under game, uh, but couple that with the home dog trend, and looking really good so far. Uh, next, though, is the new coach, new quarterback trend. So the Jags have a new coach and a new quarterback this year. If you paid attention to the channel or the website last year, one of the pieces of research we did was how high scoring are these teams? Because a lot of times new quarterbacks come in, or even a new coach will come in, and we have these amazing expectations for them that they're just going to hit the ground running and, and just do great things and score, you know, light up the scoreboard. That's not usually the case, though. Uh, doing that research, we found out that when we have a combined new coach and new quarterback, the, that team scores on average 19 points a game. Uh, 19 points is well below the NFL average, but especially important when we're talking about a game where they're actually favored. So they're favored to win the game, um, despite Vegas knowing that this team is probably going to score 21 points or less. So they might have it handicapped a little bit different because it's so early in the season and they don't really know if Deshaun Watson's going to be there or not. But either way, I don't see this game going above 45. Um, lastly, though, and this is more to, the, to speak to the game itself and not just trends, but the Jaguars... Uh, last year, and I know it's different because obviously there's a new coach, but last year they did have a, a very run-heavy approach. And for game one, I don't see Urban Meyer going out there and just letting uh, you know, letting the ball fly. I think he's going to play really conservatively, or he's going to you know, play call very conservatively, kind of have all of his uh, coaches around him be very conservative. He's made some mistakes already, uh, just you know, being his coach, even though it's the off season. And like administrative mistakes and things like that. And I think he's trying to save face. He's going to try to kind of get everything in line. And he understands that this is kind of a you know honeymoon trial for him. So he, this first year, uh, especially this first week, it's not like he's going to be under intense scrutiny. Everybody kind of expects a slow start. They know the team is not like Super Bowl bound. So I think we're going to see a slow paced game uh, with the Texans. Even if Deshaun Watson is playing, I, I don't. I don't like the setup of their team. I don't like their coaching. Um, they have very limited skill players. Uh, Brandon Cooks, assuming he can play. And yeah, even their back for the running back room is just all sorts of a mess. They have like three guys back there right now. Their coaching is still in turmoil. They 
just the team is just not in a good place right now. Um, and it's a divisional matchup. I, there's to me, I see this being like a 17 to seven kind of game. Um, probably going to be really slow, really you know underwhelming, and all the trends are pointing that way. The coaching staffs are pointing this way. Like I said, even if Deshaun Watson plays, um, I mean, I'm really expecting the Texans to go out there and put up, you know, 30 points. Um, and even if the, so if the Texans were to have Deshaun Watson and he played amazing and they put up 28 points, my, I have very high doubts that the Jags would be able to, to surpass 17 points, uh, especially their first time out there. So they're just too many rookies, uh, coaching staff included. I, I don't see this game going over 45. Like I said, I could totally see this this total nose diving as we get closer and closer to actual kickoff. So I I don't want to give you a specific date to grab this, but monitor it if you see it uh, kind of dipping or going back and forth. Grab the 45. Make sure that you get that while you can, um, and hopefully that's not going to be until like late August. Um, even that's kind of a bit of a hold. I preferably I'd really like to wait to like the week of the game, but again I, I don't. I'm not holding my breath because I don't think that that, that total is still going to be there uh, come that week. That being said, let's take a look at some other games that also fit our home dog criteria. Uh, so 49ers at Lions, where the Lions are seven-point dogs. Uh, it's 45 is the total right now. 49ers are just a run-heavy team. Um, they're really defensive-minded. The Lions are kind of the same situation the Texans are. I don't like their offense right now. Jared Goff is not great. I, I kind of doubt he's even good, really. Um, they have Swift, who's an amazing running back. They lost Kenny Galladay. They lost a lot of their pieces. Um, and the Lions, actually, that I don't think they know what they want to do on offense. I think they are trying to also be a slow, grind-it-out kind of team. Um, and while I think that they are trying to put those pieces in place, um, I just I don't see it happening. So it's probably going to be a lower scoring game as well. I see the 49ers coming out having a great game, just running this one, you know, just just taking control of the game from kickoff and just not even looking back. Uh, that being said, though, just the style of play that the 49ers have, I could see them running a lot and it not really being a huge blowout. It ended up being like a 21 to seven kind of game, 28, you know, seven, 10, something like that. Um, which kind of works in our favor because if the game is at least within like two scores for the most part, you know, the Lions aren't going to go out there and try bombing it, you know, in the second quarter. They're going to probably just keep playing their pace, keep playing their slow game while the 49ers are continuing to do the same thing. And so you see both these teams just kind of grinding and grinding and grinding at the end of the game before we know it. Hey, there's five minutes left and the score is like 17 to 7. So. Um, I do see this game ending at like a 24 to 10 kind of you know kind of score here, maybe even 24 17. Uh, so I still do think it's going to go under. I think that the home dog trend plays really well for us, as well as the heavy running teams um, also kind of helping out there. So I would put some money on that, but I'm not uh, looking forward to that one just as much uh, as the Jags Texans, only because I think the 49ers are a great team. I think Shanahan is a is a great coach. And I could see this team having having a good game, you know, getting those one or two big plays and putting us over that 45. So for that reason, again, I like it, but I'm not really uh, ready to put money down on it just yet. And I'll kind of wait and see what happens, see if they can maybe take that score up a little bit as we get closer to kickoff. Uh, second tier, and this is tiers where I'm just not going to touch the game until, unless something major happens between now and then. Uh, the Ravens at the Raiders. Uh, Raiders are five point dogs, five and a half point dogs. Ravens are amazing. They come out and they crush the, their opponent week one, like every year. At least the last four years, I believe now. Um, they've just crushed that first week. And that's really what I'm staying off of this. I could see the Ravens putting up, you know, 40 plus points um, and just racking up scores. And the Raiders, you know, all they got to do is score once or twice and they put us over that 51. I'm not going to take that gamble. Um, if anything, I would look to, to have the Ravens cover, and I'm, I'm almost positive I'm going to end up taking that play. But Ravens minus the five and a half to me looks a lot more appetizing than under 51. Uh, Vikings and the Bengals, they have under 45 for their first week. The Bengals are two and a half point home dogs. Bengals, though, you know, with the healthy Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and kind of that wide receiving core having another year under their belts, 
um, Joe Mixon getting their offensive line back. A lot of these things are playing in their favor. The Vikings, while they are a slower-paced team, they like to run a lot with Alvin Cook, obviously. Um, they can also light up the scoreboard. Uh, they have Jefferson, and he can he can put it up, you know, one two touchdowns himself, and it doesn't take very long. It's just one pass. Um, so again, same thing here. I yes, I, I like the trend, but the fact that either of these teams could just you know make mistakes and score um, and kind of get you know get over 30 points each is going to keep me away from that. I just I, I think there's too much potential in these teams and then we don't know enough about them. So I'm not going to put money on that. Uh, lastly is Bronco and uh, Broncos at the Giants. The Broncos are a slower paced team and they do traditionally like to run. It just it's just not a very high scoring offense. That being said, the Giants, and I'm assuming that the reason that the under is at 42 and a half right now, is the Giants last year also looked really slow. Um, we have to keep in mind they did not have Saquon Barkley for the majority of the year, and they have also picked up Kenny Galladay. So having the additional weapon and the receiver, having a healthy running back, uh, this is the third year for Daniel Jones, which is typically a pretty big breakout year for quarterbacks really leads me to say the Giants can do anything this year. We, we don't know. We don't know how, um, and I apologize, I said third year is second year, is the breakout year for quarterbacks. But third year since we, for Daniel Jones, might be his second uh, as far as like his breakout year, mainly because last year he just didn't really have anybody to play with. There was no Barkley. He didn't have Kenny Galladay back then. Um I can see the Giants being a way better team than a lot of us are expecting this year and doing a lot better in the division than we're expecting because this, I mean, other than the Cowboys, I, the Eagles have a just they have an uphill battle. Uh, Washington's just like they're good but not great. It, that division is totally up for grabs. But more to the point, uh, Broncos and the Giants, I can see the Giants just really surprising everybody here and putting up like 35 points in week one. And at that point, it's really just like, hey, did the Broncos score once or twice? And on the same note, the Giants do not have a good defense. So the Broncos could, you know, again, kind of make some mistakes uh, and mess up and still get to, you know, 17, 20, 24 points, in which case it's just going to be cutting it too close for me. Um, so, again, that's just a stay away for me. Uh, my favorite play is that Jags at Texans game. I will be putting money on that um, as we get closer to the actual season. But again, I hope that this was helpful, guys. I hope that you're kind of uh, at least looking at some of these things and monitoring the point totals and margins and spreads as we're getting close to the NFL season. Uh, you're going to just see them moving and changing, and so you've got to know where things are starting uh, in order to take advantage of those moves as we get closer to kickoff. But hopefully you will follow me uh, or subscribe to the channel. Also, take a look at AAGS.online for more information, more news, my picks as they start coming out. Again, those will be posted every week as we get closer to the NFL season. Uh, I do preseason bets as well. Not very many, obviously, but a few uh, plus EV angles that I like will be posted on the website. Again, thank you for your time. Hopefully, uh, you can learn something from here as well as the website, and have a great day.